The Messenger has a lot going for it. It's a 2D action platformer with a gorgeous aesthetic that seamlessly goes from 8 to 16 bit. It has a hilarious sense of humor, clever dialogue, and one of the absolute best retro themed chiptune soundtracks out there. There was even a period of time while playing The Messenger, once I unlocked its full suite of core abilities, when I felt this might be one of the best games I've played all year. But then, something happens at about the halfway point. The Messenger changes genre completely from a linear action platformer like Ninja Gaiden on the NES to a sprawling Metroidvania. Unfortunately, it fumbles this transition, padding the back half with repetitive backtracking and boring fetch quests. <laughs> Developed by Sabotage Studio, The Messenger is a tribute to NES-era action platformer games whose influence is obvious even at a glance. There's even a tongue-in-cheek reference to Ninja Gaiden right at the start, just to get it out of the way. The Messenger begins as a modernized take on the NES Ninja Gaiden games. Your character runs, jumps, flips, and can only swing his sword in one horizontal direction like Ryu. But as you progress and begin to unlock more skills that totally change how you approach both combat and platforming, the Messenger starts to find its own identity, as a much faster paced action platformer with a heavy focus on mobility and pinpoint precise timing. A new gameplay mechanic at the core of The Messenger is an ability called Cloud Stepping, which replaces a traditional double jump with the ability to gain a jump if you're able to hit something with your sword. This leads to intense platforming challenges where enemies and their projectiles are simultaneously dangerous threats and potentially life-saving points of contact for your sword. The mechanic is put to use brilliantly in the level design, making the fundamentals of the messenger an absolute blast to play with. There's definitely a learning process when it comes to training your brain to remember to jump, strike, then jump again, and it gets especially tricky when you need to chain multiple cloud steps in a row while also juggling a wingsuit and a grappling hook. But once it clicks, you absolutely feel like a ninja badass. It's also at this point that you're able to time travel 500 years into the future by moving through space time tears, changing the messenger from an 8-bit NES throwback to a 16-bit SNES throwback. It's a neat gimmick, especially because every music track has both an 8-bit and 16-bit version, but the levels don't change enough to make the backtracking any less tedious. In fact, the time traveling mechanic actually adds an extra layer of tedium, because reaching a waypoint in the wrong era means schlepping back to a rift, switching era, and then making your way back without dying. And chances are, you will die a lot in the messenger. Checkpoints can be spaced out quite far from each other, and whenever you die, you're not brought back at full health. Still, the difficulty finds a nice balance at being just difficult enough for the triumphs to feel appropriately rewarding. As much as a slog as the back half of the messenger is, it's still very much worth pushing through, not only because some of the last few stages are phenomenal, but also because the story is surprisingly deep. What begins as a simple plot involving your character carrying a scroll from one end of the island to another evolves into a grand conflict full of rich and interesting backstory, memorable characters, and some really clever subversions of expectations. When you're fully geared up and the messenger is hitting you with brand new stages and challenges that you haven't seen before, the messenger is an amazing must-play experience. Taken as a whole, it's brought down by numerous fetch quests that make the messenger last several hours longer than it feels like it should. For more of the messenger, check out the first 12 minutes of gameplay, and for everything else, keep it here at IGN.